Hello everyone, Von Yuki here with another video, and this time I'm going over what's called the Mr. FPGA. So what the Mr. FPGA is, it's an open source project, and they basically ported Mist over to a better FPGA. This time it's the Altera Cyclone 5, which is, I believe, the same FPGA that's in the Analog Super NT and the upcoming Mega SG, I think that's what it's called. It's called. And... Um, a buddy of mine, he got his Mr. Uh, about a month or so ago, and he talked about how great it was. So I was like, you know what, <laughs> let me delve into it myself, let me do some research, and you'll see a lot of YouTube channels talking about it, and they love it because it's open source, and there's a big community, and people are trying to help each other out. There's a Discord service, uh, server, there's a um, Atari forum, GitHub, this is all open source, and it's great, I mean... And what Alar got me into it is the just the possibility that Neo Geo will actually happen. Um, I have a few cores right now. And right now you've seen the Genesis core and it's quote unquote cycle accurate. I haven't really tested it out that much to know. But I did uh, play Streets of Rage 2 which is my favorite Genesis game. And the one thing I'll say about it is the lag is, if there's any lag, I, I certainly didn't get affected by it. Uh, next to my Mr. FPGA is the Raspberry Pi with the Retro Trink. And when I play Streets of Rage on the Raspberry Pi um, on this screen, you know, with component, I, I do feel the input delay, but it's pretty good. Uh, it it's not bad at all. It's definitely playable. I, I would say for a $35 piece of hardware plus the, I believe it's 60 for the Retro Trink, uh, $95 to get a perfect experience is asking a lot. Well, the Mr. FPGA comes in a little heftier because it's an actual FPGA at $130, and then the I.O. board cost me, I believe, $25, and, you know, it is more money, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, I will say that. FPGA, you know, you can talk about semantics, whether it be emulation or simulation. Um, I just know that it's better than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, by quite a bit. Uh, is it as good as a PC? I believe so also. Um, there are times where you have to mess around with the PC, whether you're using Vulkan or OpenGL. With this, you just drop in one of the cores, uh, and it's fairly easy to set up. And within minutes, you know, you get everything going. You, you can start playing games right off the bat. Uh, so far, you do need a keyboard, which I have connected uh, with a USB hub. And right now, the... I have the I.O. board, like I said, it was like $25, and I also have the RAM expansion uh, board as well, which is about another $20. It only gives you 32 megs of SD RAM, but you got to understand, this is an FPGA, so it's you don't need such high-end hardware to get good results. This is not a, like a PC emulator where you need like a 5 gigahertz CPU to run, uh, you know, cycle accurate stuff. But so far, so good. I've been testing out on the CRT, and... YPBR, uh, PBPR looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, this is um, Street of Rage 2. And th it's not exactly perfect. There are some caveats here. Um, for instance, I'll give you a core, uh, Turbo Graphics. Okay. We'll do Turbo Graphics and let's see. Let's get a game going on this guy. Let's do Street Fighter 2. Now, Street Fighter 2 is probably the biggest hue card out there for the Turbo Graphics. And I believe it was a 20 megabit card and um, I knew a friend of mine who actually had the card and it was a bit thicker than the regular Hue cards. And it looks great and I played it, it played great using, um, you can use like a regular controller, just plug it into the USB hub and I have like a little OTG cable and it's just plugged in and it works fine. Um, but I did notice some graphical errors while I was playing the game. They were randomly happening, but it didn't happen often. But every three or so four matches, you would just see a blip. You would see a, a, a little mess up on the Turbo Graphics score. I haven't gotten that on Genesis. I've only tried Street of Rage 2, and I didn't get any issues with that at all. So as things are coming along, people will start breaking down uh, the cores. Uh, tried Nintendo. Nintendo worked pretty well. There were some issues with Gimmick, but uh, Castlevania 3 looked great. Super Nintendo works really, really well. That that was the one that blew me away. I mean, two weeks ago, they were like, well, you know, we have Super Nintendo. It might be able to do this. And now it did CX4. So Mega Man 3 fans, uh, excuse me, Mega Man X3 fans, 
the game is playable. Um, I can't speak on how exact it is for the Super Nintendo, but it loaded up. I mean, I was able to mess around with it, and I was like, wow, this actually looks good. It had the beginning with the, you know, with the vector graphics and the line graphics. It was all there, so it's coming along pretty well. It looks great in YPBPR. It has native YPBPR out. Um, the connection is a DE15, and there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So the same cables that I use for like the analog NT mini work perfectly fine on this. And that's what I did. So it looks good. It plays well. Uh, is it worth the money? I would say yes, because at this point right now, I would say it's as good, if not better than a high end PC running the emulation. Plus you get YPBPR out. So you get your 240p. Now, I have heard people say, hey, it's not that great on the HDMI out. It adds a couple frames of lag. There is an open source uh, scaler out there. The guy's trying to, you know, bring the lag down. There's some things he's got to do. So that's a possibility. But for those of you who have a, um, let's say, a VGA to SCART cable, which I do, I did test this out, and it will see it as RGBS on the OSSC. Heck, you could probably use a DE15 straight to DE15 on the AV3 on that thing, and it'll probably work. So the, it is a very versatile machine so far, but uh, you just get the baseboard for 130 so I want people to understand that. If you get the baseboard, um, there's not that many cores that will run without the RAM. I believe TurboGrafx and Sega Genesis are the ones that do run without the memory. There might be a few others, but in order to get Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, uh, Sega Master System... There's a whole bunch more. Um, you're going to need to get that RAM expansion. And I'm sure Neo Geo probably might even require two. I mean, that's we'll see what Furtech comes up with because now he has one in his hands. But the community is big. It's getting a lot of support from a lot of people. It's open source. So, um, you know, I'm a believer in it. I'm going to donate some money in Patreon for these guys because, you know what, they're busting their ass. They deserve a little something. So I just want to put this PSA out there. I'll put a link to the Patreon out there to get... So they can get some help. Um, but so far, so good, man. I mean, FPGA Turbo Graphics, it's not 100% perfect, but it's getting there. FPGA Genesis, I mean, I played it on one game. It's pretty flawless, in my opinion. So as it gets better, as it matures, I'm sure, you know, they'll add more cores. Uh, there are people talking about this guy named Electronic Ash. He's been working on CPS-1. That's going to be a godsend for our arcade guys. Um, so, you know, Raspberry Pi was good for its time. But it, it can't compete with an FPGA, and it's got. I can't believe how cheap FPGAs have gotten. They, they used to be really, really expensive, and there are expensive FPGAs out there. But for one hundred and thirty dollars on Amazon, I mean, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I got my I/O board and my RAM from a guy named Puba. He got it within like four days, which you know everyone has a big long waiting list. And that guy, guy was a pro. He said, "Hey, I'll ship it out Monday." Shipped it out Monday, and I got it today on Saturday. So awesome awesome deal all the way around anyway guys if you have any questions or comments please hit me up i'm not too well versed in the mister yet but there's a lot of documentation out there so all you tech heads out there that love reading this sort of stuff i mean i'm i'm getting into it too i mean i think it's great that they're actually preserving these things because one of these days these consoles you know you're gonna run out of parts it, it, it's gonna go and the fact that i have an fpga genesis now or an FP8. I don't even own a Turbo Graphics, so that just tells you that right there how how much value you get out of this thing. So go out there and support these people because they're making it the dream come true.